Hello and welcome. You're listening to Cine UK Podcast and this is episode 418 for Friday the 23rd of January 2015. Amazon is getting into the movie business, but can anyone really challenge Netflix? Plus we meet Apple's latest purchase, charge our phones, buy magic in Starbucks, and things are getting strange. I'm starting to worry. Could it be a case for Mulder and Scully? I'm Rich Trenholm and joining me on a high-tech line studio this week is Luke Westaway. <laughs> I want to believe. Is that a hello. <laughs> is that how you say that? That's how he says hello. He's been away for a bit. He's been off in Vegas. And also with us is Andy Hoyle. Hello, Andy. Hello. That's how you say hello. Oh, you use the word from the front speaking bent. I Hang on, let me give that. it another go. Say hi to me. Hi, hi. <laughs> Keep working on that. Keep working on that. We are back filming this podcast, so if you've missed our ugly mugs because we've uh, only been audio recently, you can still enjoy the rest of our videos uh, on CNET.com or YouTube.com slash CNET. We do look good, actually. We do look good. I've had a new haircut, everything. Have you? Yeah, it's like the old one, only smaller. Yeah. Uh, let's start <laughs> with some like... news. <laughs> I'm going to start by telling you what Apple has been up to. What Apple, has Apple been up to? Well, what it's done, guys, yep. is bought Music Metric. Now, okay. if the name okay. didn't give the game away, just a little bit there. Music Metric is a UK company, actually, and that basically gives all kinds of analysis um, on uh, music downloads, so uh, download amounts and, and things like reviews. Um, uh, also, actually, about piracy, like where it's been pirated. That's, and yeah, stuff. that's true. So it's kind of it's, it's a very modern phenomenon, I guess. It's um, they they not only they look at sales and streaming things, which are the sort of things that would have been rec- uh, measured by the charts previously, the sort of things that actually bring in cash in right. terms of music. Uh, they also look at uh, piracy activity if people are torrenting certain uh, songs or artists. They look at reviews, they look at comments, they look at other social buzz on social, social networks. Buzz. So uh, which doesn't bring in cash, but yet seems to have currency in these this day and age. So it's been bought by Apple anyway. And so, so that could be like a good yeah. way of of giving like an actual proper music charts instead of just on sales it's on everything like this all encompassing mm. what is like the UK top 40 we like will word know. of mouth well yeah but you know in, but including all these things that really matters yeah. about music yeah absolutely. maybe that'd be cool I guess this is in the run up because um, Apple's having bought Beats and Beats what was going to be their streaming service Beats Music is, Beats Music yeah this is sort of run up to Apple launching that okay. that was Bought ages Beats. ago they bought Beats I completely mm. forgotten it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when millions gonna, and millions of dollars. When like are they going to do something billions, with it? They're their biggest ever purchase. They, well, they, I think they're, what they're going to do is they're going to fold Beats Music into iTunes in some way, and presumably Music Metrics will be a part of that. But we will uh, find out soon. Yeah. I hope. <sighs> anyway. Well, from ingesting the fruit of lovely beans through your ears, we're ingesting the fruit of lovely beans through your mouth. I'm glad via, you said mouth via coffee, <laughs> and more specifically. <laughs> Starbucks. Our, st- our team of fifty screenwriters are, are, are really earning their money this week. Too, yeah. So well, that was good. Segue. Obviously, segue. everyone knew what I was doing there. Mm. Um, basically, Starbucks is bringing its wireless charging um, via power mat uh, from San Francisco into London in some of Starbucks stores. Actually, Luke, you were at the launch for this yes. yesterday. So why don't you tell us more? Yes. Seeing so as you're all caffeined up on I it. I went to a yep. Starbucks in London to to see how this works. Okay. It's actually a bit. So basically, what happens is the 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 tables in Starbucks have yep. these 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 glossy uh, pad things that are about the size of coasters but they're mm. embedded in the in the tables and um, coasters la di da la di da <laughs> and <laughs> check uh, out Monsieur Fonsi Fonsi <laughs> yeah, with me coasters <laughs> no rings on my coffee table <laughs> <laughs> How do we anyway? Um, yeah, uh, and then you so you need like a a, a wireless charging dongle thing, mm-hmm. which are these colourful little hoops which have a little connector on them. And let me finish. Yeah. So you basically go up to the till and you borrow one of those. You mm-hmm. plug it into the bottom of your phone and then yeah. you just rest it over the the pad so the hoops on the pad and it charges your phone wirelessly. Okay, so hang on, let me get this straight, right? Yeah. It's wireless charging, which is uh, supposed to be a technology that does away with the need for, for wires and chargers, so you just yeah. bonk your phone down or something. Yes. And you have to borrow a charger. Uh, okay, well... Starbucks nailed it. All right, well, uh, we will get to all the reasons why <laughs> why you're wrong to be unexcited. Okay. But first I will concede that commenters do agree with you. They're okay. not impressed. The Quite duck right, commenters. The duck of death is yeah. on your side. Mm-hmm. Always a powerful ally to have. Um, <laughs> says, that might be the dumbest invention yet. 
in all the history of wrenches, this is at the top of the list. A wireless charger that you connect to the charger port. Mm. Meanwhile, General Stuff, I can only assume that's his military rank, <laughs> yeah. says, to be honest, if I can't use my phone comfortably while it is charging, which I can't if it has to sit flat against the table, I would rather have a wire. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, okay, right. So here's the reason why it's, it's stupid to criticise this. Mm. First of all, wireless charging only do, only promises to do away with the need for wires, which mm-hmm. this does. So okay. we can't accuse it of, of being misleading. Okay. Secondly, it's not like there was an alternative. It's not like they've taken away all of the wired chargers they had in Starbucks, okay. springing out of the tables, and now this is all you've got. So, so like, now, instead of like one PowerPoint, you could have like as many yeah. as four or five phones dotted yeah. on a table. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like right people around. don't have their phone chargers with them. Mm. Uh, there are only a few wall sockets and everything. And these, this is something that's like there's loads of them all through the all through the shop, kind mm-hmm. of loads on the desk um, and also like there's no fee for borrowing one from Starbucks if you if you want to save time on repeat visits you can pay a tenner mm. and then it's yours to keep and definitely quite, don't just walk out with it definitely don't just walk out with it That's yeah. just, I mean who would do that it's awful. You did um, mention, yeah. Luke, um, that you know they're not doing away with all the wires coming out of tables and stuff. Yes. Why is this better than having wires coming out of tables? I'll so tell you, you can plug it in and actually keep using your phone. You don't have to leave. Yeah, it Yeah, but the then there's only a limited number of sockets, and let's face it, you go into a Starbucks. There's always one person who's turned up and bought like uh, Hogging it. A, a half a green tea and is yeah. sitting there for 75 hours working. Also, on their like play. things like cables poking out of it's the me, table is, is kind of ugly. No, I think yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, no, you taught yeah. you me around actually. Yeah. And also, we have the uh, an endorsement from uh, Mark, our producer. He will never see you. He's just come back from San Francisco and he's yes. seen it in action in San they Francisco. Are, they are already rolling and this out to 2,000 San Francisco uh, Starbucks, I believe. There you go. Is it going to be in every Starbucks in Britain, do you know? Um, no, it's only in 10 Starbucks in London. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the first wave. So they've, they started in the US and it's like it's now spreading pretty rapidly. Okay. So that it seems to have worked over there. And if people take to it in these 10 Starbucks in London. <laughs> For the record, then, then I think yeah. this is completely the most stupid way of doing this that I've possibly ever heard. Let me give you one more reason why why it isn't. So wireless charging is fraught with drama at the moment. You wouldn't believe it because it's so uninteresting. Mm. But there's all these different standards. There's like the Qi standard, QI is it spelled. Mm -hmm. And then there's the PMA and then there's there's another one, I think. These use the PMA standard. Isn't that the rubbish one that no one uses? But it doesn't matter what they use because you plug in this sort of dongle thing. Oh yeah, you thing get a charger. Then, yeah, and then, and then everything works with it. Okay. So, it. So it doesn't matter what kind of, you don't have to, like iPhones work which don't have any sort of wireless charging capabilities. Yeah. Okay. And let's face it, are the ones probably loads of people in Starbucks want chargers for. That's true. So, so, so really quick, is there a phone, can you, off the top of your head, can you think of any phones that do have wireless charging that you can use with this? Um, no, but, uh, <laughs> I can think of some of wireless charging. They have they use they use Qi, right? Yeah, they use the Qi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LG's. Yeah. yeah, Qi is is by far the most popular one. <laughs> so they could have gone with Starbucks Qi and nailed it, and actually. <laughs> had it done properly but no they couldn't have done like no one no one who has a wireless charging phone uses their phone what like uses that capability or like i don't i think almost but that's because does. they have to buy separate wireless what, chargers but if Starbucks, people start building it into tables and things which is what they need to do in order to make wireless charging no, a no. thing Absolutely. Starbucks, so you have a you have a theory on this well i think you? yeah <laughs> I, I i think that um that because so we're always <laughs> always complaining about battery life being so poor on phones but mm. i think wireless charging is actually going to make that that argument a bit a bit null really because you won't if if you have wireless charging built into everywhere you go so when you go to Starbucks you put your phone out on the table automatically charges you'll buy desks for the office with this already built in and for library and schools and, and whatever so wherever you go you put your phone down it will just charge constantly in small bursts throughout the day so you don't need your battery to last more than a day or even more than half a day because it will always be charging alright so you don't ever have to do like one big charge overnight and leave Ex- your phone to, to yeah, charge yeah and hope you that you'll get enough throughout the day yeah it'll okay well I think that's up. quite enough about wireless charging no I, I, I have one <laughs> thing that I have to say and I don't care don't let him. Time. There's um, like Starbucks on a practical level. Yeah. No one currently uses wireless charging, even though it's a very cool technology and it's mm. been around for years. Nobody uses it. Yeah. Starbucks sort of basically made Wi-Fi in cafes a thing. Mm-hmm. That was sort of, that was something that I believe they pioneered. Okay. So they are that. Mr. Uh, Starbucks. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Starbucks himself <laughs> came down with his big big um, Uncle Sam top hat and he said. <laughs> Score and seven years ago, <laughs> <laughs> we invented Wi-Fi <laughs> in coffee shops. Look, and so I'm saying they've got the clout to sort of make something right. happen. Okay. So okay. So well, uh, to be fair, actually, it is it is good that someone's kind of getting out, getting ahead of the curve and doing yeah. it, even if they are really making a mess of it. But there you go. Good on you, Starbucks. Hooray! <laughs> How many score in seven years ago was it actually? Oh, some, some. some. Anyway, I can sense this podcast Four. falling out of control already. Yeah. Andy, what is happening in the world of Google Glass? Well, bad news in the world of Google Glass, oh, as news. Google mm. is going to stop selling it. 
Oh dear. Yeah. Right. So yeah. is it dead? No, it's not dead. What it's doing is just not having it for sale anymore. <laughs> it it's is not dead. It's just not for sale. <laughs> it's just not for sale. Anymore. But it will be continuing working on it and working with developers and. Hopefully, this will be for future editions or, f or using the technology for other things. Well, this is it. So you're kind of a fan of the concept of, of, of the kind of the, the principle behind Glass, if not necessarily the, the hardware itself. I am, yes. I think that Google Glass, as, a, as an idea, the idea of having this sort of weird futuristic concept and giving it out to all these developers to try mm. and crowdsource these ideas and crowdsource the development is a really good idea. Like a huge and actually, public beta test. Exactly, yeah. And it means that they can filter down some of the cool ideas with um, and the technology and voice control and voice recognition into things like Android Wear, which is on sale. But I do think that charging £1,500 for Glass um, is a bad idea, and I don't mm. think people should buy that. I think it should have just been used for testing um, only. Absolutely, and uh, I think readers uh, agree with you on the the bad idea part. Of it. Yes, <laughs> they do. Uh, Jane's underscore Garden says, "If a stranger walked up to you, photographed, filmed you, then walked away, how would you like it? How about doing the same to your children?" Mm. I'm glad Google Glass is gone, and the idiots who invented them should start looking for more worthwhile ways to spend his time. Damning from mm -hmm. Jane's Garden there. Uh, Empire says, "I'm a technophile and love all things technology." Logical, but mm -hmm. Google, but Google Glass crosses a line that shouldn't be crossed. I'm glad we won't have to say the words Google Glass anymore Google because Glass. it is quite difficult. Google so. Glass is gone. I mean, you know, so even if I was problem. sober right now, I would probably struggle with it, frankly. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I can't say it sober. <laughs> yeah. um, JFCP says mm -hmm. Google already owns all oh, your. Jeff 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 how is Jeff these days? He's fine. Well, he's angry. <laughs> yeah. Google already owns all your personal files if you use their email. With Google Glass, they'd own every minute of your day and every move you made. Big Brother and Skynet rolled into one. And that's absolutely not overstating it in any no, way. It isn't. <laughs> and, well, even the people who like Google Glass have their reservations. Mm. So Shire Knight says, I love the idea of Google Glass and would definitely use it. However, no one wants a Borg sitting opposite them, so it needs to be made much more discreet. Right. Well, the good news is it's not going to be made much more discreet or indeed made. <laughs> Made at all, so. <laughs> well, they are going to keep working on it, so we'll. I don't think we'll ever see it. I don't think we'll ever see it again. Really? Do you think? Well, <laughs> Google can't say like we're scrapping it because actually it turns out. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like not selling it anymore, and oh, I'm definitely going to take the technology. Okay, definitely going to take the days. We'll see something similar, and I certainly think the technology mm. will, as Maybe. I say, be filtered down into. We do have Android Wear. Mm. Um, watches, I have one right now, and that's using a lot of the voice recognition technology that Google's been developing, and mm. Glass is part of that, because it obviously relies on voice control and stuff, cool. so. All right. yeah. Well, cool. well, let's move on to a bit of technology that uh, is a bit more popular. You know, yes, recently. we're going to talk about space probe news. Space probe news. In fact, Rich, actually, you have some good space probe news. Absolutely, well, it's, it's kind of, it's good news and bad news, in a way, to be honest. Um, so the good oh. news <laughs> is that um, the, uh, the Beagle 2 probe has been found, Hooray. and not only did it make it to Mars, just like it was planned, it is, uh, it's bad on target. So it had this, uh, this uh, it, it's a space probe that was built by the European Space Agency, backed by, it was a British-led team, and their target area was 500 kilometers by 100 kilometers, and they were a mere five kilometers away from the center. So that's, wow. a, in space terms, that's a proper bullseye. Amazing. The bad news, obviously, is that, um, they lost touch with it about 10 years ago when it actually landed, mm. and it's basically knackered, and there's no way of getting <laughs> in touch with it. So they landed it in exactly the right place, but um, but it, 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 it looks like it's mostly intact, but um, they basically the antenna doesn't, they, it didn't unfold properly, so the, so the space antenna hasn't popped out, which seems like a little bit of a design flaw, but well, to, I'm no rocket scientist. So, time to send out Beagle 3, the repair Beagle. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there, there are, um, <laughs> there, is, there is a Tokyo European Drift. Space Agency. <laughs> Beagle 3, the clumps. <laughs> Beagle 3, Beagle harder. Beagle um, 3, cruise control. <laughs> loaded. So yeah, so there is going to be throttle. another probe sent out in, uh, I believe, 2019 by the European Space Agency, and there are mm. a couple of other pro probes already wandering around the surface of Mars. So well, there's also the uh, European Space Agency that uh, did the uh, whole comet landing as well. So, so did. What a year for space exploration it has. Those guys wow. have been has been. Speaking of space exploration in a very tangential way, but... What, well, more, more, more flaky than my uh, segue <laughs> earlier. Yeah. The X-Files! Let's talk about X-Files because X -Files. that is apparently <laughs> maybe going to be hitting our TVs again in 2015. Yes. It is um, apparently uh, Fox executives have been in conversations with Chris Carter, the producer mm -hmm. and the writer, to, um, to bring it back. So that's good yeah. news, right? Absolutely, and stars Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny are like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. yeah. Well, if you like, yeah, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, actually, because it was weird because Gillian Anderson was on uh, the Nerdist podcast yeah. um, uh, last week, so and before oh, before this came out, I think actually mm -hmm. this other news, and she was saying that she'd be really keen on doing it and 
thinks that David Duchovny is would be. So um, yeah, I think that's really that's really cool news. You'd like to see the story continue, wouldn't you? I would love fan. to see the story continue. I'm a big fan of X Files. Uh, it's a great show, and um, yeah, I like the movies as well, where because they they progress the storyline a bit in the movie. I think mm-hmm. the last one, um, it turned out that um, Mulder and Scully actually got married and stuff, which wasn't. <laughs> In the, in, do, the, do, in the series, do, 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 do. so yeah. it'd be good to sort of see what position they are, whether they're still in the FBI and whether they're right. like, you know, maybe Mulder's in charge of it or something. Okay. Or who I, knows? I'm well, so this, yeah, Luke. I'm I'm not not sure. I, I think the first thing to say is that the, like the X Files is finished, but mm. but its spirit definitely lives on. Like there are mm. there are shows like uh, Warehouse 13 or Fringe springs to mind, which mm. do feel like a sort of modern reimagining of um, of of the X Files. They mm. kind of deal with similar themes, but it's a mu- they're more modern modern and the fresher TV shows. Sure. And actually, I think that, that The X-Files was very much of its time. And if you tried to do it in a sort of m- modern modern way, like it, it, it just wouldn't work. I mean, I, I do uh, remember watching, I recently watched the first season again, because I only watched a couple of them at the time mm. when it was on. I've never actually seen the whole thing. So I, I thought I'll, I'll go back to Netflix and I'll watch it. And I was watching a few of the early episodes and I was thinking, do you know what? This show would be over if Mulder just had a mobile phone and yeah. a digital camera. Well, like, every time he breaks into some sort of se- top secret government base, it mm. ends with someone stamping on his camera. And it's like, <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Next time we'll get the proof. Yeah. But this day, he'd just be Snapchatting it. But there'll be no point Snapchatting it because like the NSA would be an- intercepting that. And it's like, mm. the, the X-Files w- was like, was this fun kind of, oh, imagine if there was like a government behind the government. Mm. And, so. and now we know that there is. And they're not doing fun things like hiding aliens yeah. and, and stuff like that. And like, like, dr- like downing crazy submarines full of weird space space diseases and, yeah. and stuff like that. They're just like looking at your Snapchats. They're, they're spying the on us and torturing people. Yeah, yeah exactly. So like, it's pretty grim. Yeah. So exactly. keep it in the 90s, I say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we look back fondly, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, other things that Twin Peaks coming back in a year or so, and that feels to me like another show that kind of belongs of its time. I don't know if it would belong in the modern age, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I don't yeah. think Twin Peaks belongs in any age. It's so weird. <laughs> it could be, you know, it could be set in like, 60. It could canonically be set in the 16th century hmm. and everything happens exactly the same. And oh. you'd be like, this isn't any weirder than Twin Peaks is new, already. New fan theory, I like that. Yeah, I like new that. fan theory. It all <laughs> happens in a medieval monastery. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, speaking of, uh, of, t- of TV, it's been kind of a big week for original programming on, uh, on various different services like Netflix and Amazon, that kind of thing, which we're going to talk a little bit more about right now. <laughs> Lights, camera, Amazon. Amazon is getting into the movie business. Amazon's instant video service has already started funding and showing TV shows to tempt viewers away from Netflix. And next, it's planning as many as 12 movies a year that will appear in cinemas first, then go online as little as a month later. Now, 2015 is going to be a bumper year for original content produced by Amazon, Netflix and the like. Netflix has hits with House of Cards and Orange is the New Black, and it's also launching its most ambitious project yet, four interconnected series and a mini-series featuring Marvel superheroes. Amazon just won a load of awards with Transparent, and even PlayStation Network is getting in on the action with a show called Powers. Is this an exciting new frontier in the golden age of television, or is TV as we know it fracturing into a million pieces, denying us access to our new favourite shows before they even start? It's certainly an interesting time to get square eyes. Now, Luke, are you a fan of original content? Uh, I am a fan of original content. <laughs> it's a horrible a, word, but you know, horrible movies word. and TV shows content. is what we mean. Yeah, content. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I am. I, I think it's it's really cool. I, I really enjoy loads of them, especially House of Cards, which mm-hmm. I think has been fantastic. Right. I haven't watched Orange is the New Black, but I know that everyone is universally adored. So you know, I, that, I haven't seen it, but BoJack Horseman is another Netflix one which I oh, really, yeah, really yeah, like. Yeah, I've watched yeah, that. Like that. That's mm. pretty good. Mm. And and just it's you know it, it's cool after years of these streaming service sort of services sort of being a place where really really old rubbish movies go to die <laughs> um, it, you know it feels like now there's a proper reason to get involved and there are some other advantages too so mm-hmm. um, for example if you are Netflix and you put out a TV show this way you get loads more data mm-hmm. on who's watching and when they're watching how much they're watching which episodes they stop watching and stuff sure. way more than um, traditional TV or movie makers make get. it sound yeah. so sexy <laughs> yes I do so much sexy data and there's also like the uh, potential for more interesting 
interesting stuff. So yeah. like networks might not have taken a risk on something like House of Cards. Um, That's true. They didn't originally. They wanted a pilot episode, but Netflix just said no. Nope, yeah, Netflix, give us the whole show. Yeah, Netflix was <laughs> crazy enough to be like, no, we have all the money in the world. <laughs> yeah. Have all the given spaces you need. <laughs> Mr. Um, Netflix came down with his top back. He said, well, how many Kevin spaces will it take to get this off the ground? <laughs> and they said, only one. And he said, only one? Have him immediately. <laughs> so that's what happened. And and uh, things like the Marvel collaboration, like that's yeah. unprecedented. You just mm. can't imagine, you still can't imagine that happening on traditional TV. Yeah, because so that's, that's yeah. four. Well, that's four different series of thirteen episodes plus a mini series combined, tying them all together. So it's, it's a huge, huge undertaking. It's yeah. cool. It's got, yeah. and not all of this sort of specially made for streaming services stuff is good. Mm. And also, it, like, it's slightly annoying if you've got an Amazon subscription and or you want to watch all the stuff that's on Netflix. Mm. But uh, that's, it, that's it's an right, interesting yeah. time. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there are some some drawbacks, right? I mean, there's, yeah. There's some problems. It's not. Yeah. It's not been great. I mean. It's not been great. It's not been, it's not been all. Andy, yeah, Andy sums up the last five years of television. It's not yeah, it's, 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 been it's all been great. Well, yeah, it's you know there are, there are it's it's great to see sort of Netflix and stuff doing this, but even even Microsoft because it, it launched Microsoft Studios, mm-hmm. which um, uh, which is going to create all this original content for the uh, for the Xbox One stuff. And you'd think someone as big and as Microsoft could really sort of ply this behind, but then mm-hmm. Microsoft Studios did they just canned it last year. Mm-hmm. So you know that's kind of a big blow that you'd think. Oh, so yeah. why, why can't it be done? Like, what what is the formula that needs to happen? That's true. That's right. true. And, and and also, I mean, there's, there's these other new entrants. You know, Netflix is kind of paving the way, and they're very big on binge watching. And because what they do is they uh, they put the new sh- the new shows um, on. It's available right at the same time. So yeah. every episode of the new series of House of Cards is there on the same day, so you can binge watch the whole thing. Um, and uh, it's it, that's really kind of like the the kind of gold standard, I guess. And some of the other people, they, they haven't some of the other uh, entrants into this this kind of market, they haven't quite figured that out. So PSN, for example, is, which has funded its own show for the first time called Powers, it's a superhero show. Um, they are bringing that out in March, but they're only showing one episode a week, like as if it's on mm. telly. I mean, mm-hmm. who, who See, I mean, do that? That doesn't you know? take advantage of, of the medium. Like, exactly. That's the cool thing about exactly. about it being online. Exactly. Is it that they're trying to sort of mimic um, broadcast, so maybe it's a bit more collaborative. You'll watch it. Is it is it the do they put it on just any time of the day, or is it is the idea that they actually do like an actual it's, showing? It's made available people can once a week, and then you can watch it whenever you like. So they could put it, they could put it on any time, and they could binge watch the whole thing, which would make more sense, you think. And the other thing is, like, so Amazon does something similar. They um, they have something called pilot season, where they basically make a bunch of pilots, which is a very old TV kind of model, and make a bunch of kind of first episodes of new shows, and then they put them online, and you get to vote on the ones you like, which is you know a great idea in theory. It's kind of democratic, and it takes advantage of the fact that you're that it's the internet, and you can have that feedback and mm. that interaction. Yeah. But the problem is because they're pilots. If you like one, <laughs> you've then got to wait for months for it yeah. to be made. And, and I like the fact that the Netflix goes, well, we've got this data that says people like Kevin Spacey and David Fincher. If we put them together, people are going to watch this show. And it, it gives it this kind of like an, sort of a conviction, like an authorial conviction to sort yeah. of say, OK, here's this show and we know it's good. Mm. And so here it is as a block. And that has a bit more weight to it than, than kind of... The, the sort of like pop idol kind of method of doing it of getting like one episode of a show and going here do you like it I hope yeah. you like it I'm not sure that will watch, work based on yeah. Netflix's current algorithms for this because I go on and it <laughs> says like oh because you watch Planet Earth maybe you'll like RuPaul's Drag Race I'm like well I Really, yeah, yes, Andy. Right. <laughs> like the, sis, the, the algorithm well, do, is correct. You will, you will love it. It's impossible well, not to like RuPaul's Drag Race. Sure, I'm just not quite sure I see the basically the, the everybody is being um, recommended RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, so. um, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, 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 it, it is interesting, but there is a lot of lot of data behind it. I mean, this. So, um, we've got some reader feedback about this as well. Yes, yeah. we have. Oh. Um, so. Sipin Recorvo, uh, C I P N R K O R V O is the is the oh, username. Oh, Sipin Recorvo. You decide how <laughs> it's pronounced. Uh, this is awesome. It's nice to see movies come from elsewhere than Hollywood. Uh, Mario C three says Amazon seems to be bringing out some good original stuff, but I already have Netflix. I just can't see myself subscribing to another company taking eight dollars or so out of my account every week. It's getting crazy with all these streaming sites, satellite radio, and now even programs like Adobe. It all adds up. That's, That's true. true. I, I do kind of want to watch Transparent, but I don't want to sign up to Amazon because I'm already watching House of Cards and all the other stuff on yeah. Netflix. So, um, you yeah. know, it's, and it's also, do you, do you feel like you... Because I, I, I actually have an account with both. Mm. La dee da. <laughs> and uh, when I sat at home with my feet up on a coaster. <laughs> um, but I do feel weirdly loyal to Netflix because it was the one I got into first. Sure. Yeah. So I'm always a little suspicious of what Amazon's up to. Well, I, th- I think that's why it's Transparent has been such a big deal for them. They won a couple of Golden Globes for that. They won Best, uh, best yeah. Show and, and uh, Best Actor for Jackson. Which is a huge, huge deal. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, Guitar Kid. Actually, they're, speaking of their pilot season, I just want to drop in The Man in the High Castle. Mm-hmm. I might have mentioned this last week, but The Man in the High Castle is very, very good. Okay. Mm. So 
hopefully that'll get a series in like a year. Guitar Kid 55 says, I might be the only one, but I still really enjoy going to the theatre to see a movie. Mm. I have a nice big TV and surround sound, but it still isn't the same. I don't really care how much it costs either. I live in a smaller town and have very rarely had a bad experience at a theatre. Yeah, well, that's always good to know that the cinema go. is still alive, kicking. All right, well, uh, let us know what you think about uh, the new kind of golden age of television and whether it is moving online. Uh, and for now, we're going to move on and talk a bit more about TV in this week's quiz. Yes, the quiz is back and the leaderboard stands. Andy has five. Yay! Luke and Jason are tied for the number one spot on six. Wow. So oh, this one could be a, oh could be a leaderboard breaker. Uh, Luke sounds like this. Of course. Topical. <laughs> Absolutely. And Andy sounds like this. <laughs> Andy sounds, <laughs> sounds like, like this. this. <laughs> There we go, that's what Andy sounds like. Wow. Uh, okay, so fingers and the buzzers, fastest okay. finger first. What I want you to do is I'm going to uh, describe to you some new TV shows that are coming along, some sci-fi, fantasy, geek-friendly TV shows that are starting in 2015. You don't need to know anything about the show. All you need to know is uh, you need to be able to tell me from this description, is it based on a comic? Is it a remake? Is it based on a true story? Was it rescued from another network? Is it a spin-off? Or was it that rare beast? Was it an original idea? So what was it based on, basically? Comic, okay. remake, spin-off, true story... Uh, what was it based on? Okay, all right. So here's question number one. Yeah. A girl solves crime by eating brains. Luke. Sounds like a comic book to me. It was a comic. That's iZombie yes. coming to the CW, and that was based on a comic by uh, right. Mike Allred, among other people. Uh, okay, question two. I need fingers on the buzzers. Oh, yeah. Two teenagers take shelter from nuclear war, then emerge ten years later with a child in tow. Andy. What are my options again? <laughs> What's it based That's on? Remake, mixing. comic, novel, spin-off, uh, original idea, true story? It could be a true story. Novel. It's based on the novel. It's not the right answer. Oh, I'm afraid, yeah, Luke. Luke. Yes. Was, <laughs> <laughs> was it... It's just how I say hello. <laughs> like um, was it something that another network didn't want and they're doing it? It's not the right answer. That's oh. actually an original story. That's Cockroaches really? on ITV. Yeah, so okay. there you go. British so sci-fi for you there. It's called it's Cockroaches. Okay. Cockroaches. Oh. Yeah, right. It's a post-apocalyptic British uh, comedy. Apparently it's all right. <laughs> so like Dead Set? Uh, As a post-apocalyptic British comedy. Dead Set. Wasn't that a zombie thing? It's post-apocalyptic. Zombies is zombies an apocalypse. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was like Celebrity yeah. Big Brother, wasn't it? Yeah, like The Good Dibley. Yeah. That was post-apocalyptic. No, yeah, it, it was, was yeah. It didn't come up much It's actually in the story, set in the year 5000. <laughs> that was the yeah. Christmas episode. Never, they never referenced it, but yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. When she falls in a puddle, that's like a puddle of future time travel goop. <laughs> She's going through a portal yeah. there. There's the Christmas episode where she has to go and eat two uh, rotting corpses. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah. Yeah. Question three. So what's, what's yeah. it? So Luke's on one, and that's 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 it. That's right, it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it. <laughs> that's all we've managed. Okay. We are slick, aren't we? This is a good show. Question three. Now, you both got a chance for this, because there are two possible answers to this. So remember, comic remake. Oh, novel, okay. original oh. idea, okay. rescue from the network. Okay. And the question is, what, what was this show about? Two cops investigate crimes related to superheroes. What was that based on? Andy. The two cops do what? Investigate <laughs> crimes related to superheroes. Related to superheroes. <laughs> yes. That is a... Go on, take a punt. Uh, it's not a trick question. It is a comic, yes. Yay. Yeah. And uh, there is another option as well. Do you want to go at that? It's also something <laughs> that passed and by another network. Oh, very good. Oh, do I get two points? Good. You do get two points. Yeah, I'll take that <laughs> one. Damn it. Damn it. Is that Gotham? Uh, no, that's Powers, oh. which is the oh, show that's, that's going to be on the PSN. Powers yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I did mention it earlier, which is probably a bit of a clue. But you didn't go. pay attention to my plaintive buzzing <laughs> in. <at the> <laughs> <end>. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Sorry, fine, fine. So that means it's six all. That's exciting. And wow. the tiebreaker question would have been to uh, on the kind of subject of online streaming and that kind of thing. To the mm. nearest million, how much has the controversial movie The Interview made online? Any ideas? How much money? How many in dollars? I, I in think it made. Dollars? I thought it made something like fifteen or twenty million dollars, which everyone held as a massive mm. success. But I don't think it actually is. I think that's way less money. I than think you make it was from forty. It was exactly forty million. I, there was a little <sighs> bit of help from Marco producing. No, too, it was. he definitely oh. did not mine forty to <laughs> me. It was forty million dollars. How did he mine forty? Mark, just do it again. I'm not mad. I'm just <laughs> curious. Actually, that was a really good mine for forty. Well, what, he, he, um, it was a camera on me. He held up his birth. It was like, it was like this. Showed his age. 
Uh, yeah, he was four uh, and a zero with his hands. I mean, <laughs> so the what else would he have done? I just, I just thought that was I just thought that was elegant. <laughs> so the uh, the interview it was filmed. It was rented or purchased online more than five point eight million times, and it made forty eight million dollars. But that is obviously a special case because of you know the yeah. uh, controversy around it and all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's move on now uh, onto the feedback. A beautifully concise uh, edition of the feedback this week. Uh, Silvio Ortega Alfaro says, Hola, buenas tardes. Hola. Uh, buenas tardes, Silvio. Um, so that's that nice. That was the, yeah. end of the end of the message. Lo recibo, por favor. Gracias. <laughs> that's oh, the only bitch. Spanish I know. I do apologize. Dos cervezas. <laughs> <laughs> um, Philip Thompson says, Bourbon or custard creams? Hmm. hmm. Uh, I'd go for custard creams, I think. I'd go for custard creams also. I think custard creams are... Underrated, and I think they're let down by a really, really horrible name. Mm. It's cust custard cream. Ugh. Yeah. They're not actually that custody. Andy. Uh, both are good, but neither are as good as a party ring. Uh, that's true. One Can't rings with that. Rule them all. Oh. Philip Thompson also <laughs> says supermarket brand TVs, yeah. i.e., Technica and Polaroid. Oh, this is a proper question. Okay, right. It's a proper oh, question. Yeah. 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 Focus up, guys. <laughs> uh, are they worth it or a waste of money? Good question. That is a really good question, yeah. actually. So, and unfortunately, it doesn't really have a very easy answer. So it depends on the TV. So in, in years past, we reviewed uh, Technica TVs. Um, some are okay. Yeah. Some are less so. Okay. So obviously, it slightly depends on the actual, like, the model. Um, yep. It's easy to say, go for a bigger brand like Samsung or LG. Mm. Um, but, but th So say that. If it's easy. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> yes, that's really easy, it turns yeah. out. But, um, but like, that, it, it's not... I don't think it's that much more expensive to go for a recognised brand, and there are well, you some. With your coasters and your. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. With me and my coasters. And Shall I watch Netflix or Amazon Prime? This <laughs> <evening>? Drinking <laughs> golden tea out of a doily. Yeah, <laughs> out of a doily. <laughs> yeah. Just I don't know what you strained people through get a doily. <laughs> Just put one over my mouth and have it poured through. A doily would be a useless filter with its big holes. I can't really see properly when my nose is pressed up against the glass. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. Get rid of him. <laughs> Release the hounds. <laughs> Um, anyway. Yeah. So, but there are some good reasons to go for a, a bigger brand because actually you can get a you can get a really good TV for not very much money these days. <laughs> you don't have to. There's certainly a lot of smart uh, TV features that kind of. Yes, thing that's that the other make, thing. Yeah. So, like, there's uh, it's like Samsung or LG would be kind of the, if I was buying a TV, that's a decision I would be making, and I'd be weighing up what the smart TV features are of each. Sure. And um, I think I'm not 100 percent familiar with the smart TV features of Polaroid and Technica, but I'm willing to bet that they are not. Uh, sure. as that you don't get as much. Sure. Um, as if you care about smart features, which of course I don't. Yes, but mm. but but I think people do. Do I, they? I didn't when I I didn't when I got my smart TV. And but now like I've used the Netflix app every I day. Think that's you probably I think got an Xbox you have to plugged have in before you. Yeah. Yeah, you've already got probably that. got an Xbox plugged okay, in. Okay, or or a PS4, oh, even the Xbox 360 Richie has got Netflix here. on it. Yeah, hasn't but it? like but the TV has it and that's quicker. I'm already okay, using so, the TV so, right. so I anyway. think the conclusion we've come to is that um, if you can afford a uh, you know a, a, a sort of bigger brand it's definitely worth it, but uh, yeah. if you and, can't and then as you know. were saying earlier like it's a TV is an investment. You'll have it for years and years and years. It's worth it's worth sort of shopping around. That's true. That's true. All right, great. Thanks everybody. No worries. Please keep the feedback coming everybody out there in Radio Land emailing us at our email address which is seen at uk podcast at cbsi.com it's on the screen right now if you're watching yep. the video excellent well that's it for this week thanks very much Andy <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you Luke thanks thanks to our producer Mark who you'll never see right we're off to binge watch RuPaul's Drag Race see you next week yeah.